Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at a selection of Colt Lightning Rifles. Now, you've always heard the concept of having you know, your Old West revolver and your Old West carbine or rifle chambered for the same cartridge. Well, this was not a concept that was lost on Colt. In addition, Colt saw a huge market for rifles that was all being fulfilled by the Winchester Company. Well, Winchester and maybe Remington as well. But Winchester had those lever actions that just, man, Colt really wanted to get a piece of that action. So they actually first tried by introducing the Colt Burgess rifle. They bought a design from Andrew Burgess, who was a quite talented designer, uh, and they went to introduce it, and they got some pushback from Winchester, namely in the form of Winchester deciding that maybe it was going to introduce a revolver. Because of course Winchester is looking at the same market and thinking, man, those Colt guys are selling an awful lot of revolvers, and we'd sure like a piece of that. Well, the two companies, executives, allegedly, got together and kind of went, you know what, we could fight each other, or we could just stick, agree to our own market shares and keep all of our prices relatively high, and everyone can just have a nice easy time of it. And that's what they ended up doing. And so Colt dropped its lever action rifle in 1883. But either that alleged meeting didn't go quite as smoothly as the common mythos says it did, or Colt ignored it. Or maybe Colt just decided to take a real technical reading of it and said, well, we're not going to introduce any lever-action rifles. But that doesn't mean we can't have a pump-action rifle. Because what if we take a, a pump-action rifle and chamber it for our pistol cartridge and introduce that? Maybe then we can get a part of that juicy rifle market. And the Colt Lightning was the result. So in 1884 they purchased this design from a guy named William Elliott. Uh, it kind of has some elements of the Spencer shotgun in it, has some elements of the Robinson uh, slide action rifle, which, by the way, if you're interested in, uh, I have a separate video on the Robinson that you can check out. I'll have it linked at the end of this video. And in 1884-85 they introduce the Colt Lightning. And the first one they introduce is the medium frame gun, which is well, this one in carbine form, or in full length rifle form. This guy. That was chambered for pistol cartridges. They offered it in all three of the different cartridges that they made for pistols. 3220, 3840, and 4440. Uh, they then followed that up in 1887 with two more versions. They went for a big version for big game hunting to compete with the Winchester 1876 and 1886. And then they also followed it up with a smaller 22 caliber version for target shooting and plinking. And I wonder if you can guess which order, in which order these were popular. Like which was the best selling, which was the worst selling. Well, let's take a look up close, and I'll tell you. All right, we'll start with a medium frame example here, because, well, that's what Colt started with. This particular example is chambered 32 caliber, which would be 3220. This was, I believe, the least popular, actually, cartridge for this uh, frame size, for the medium frame guns. The most popular was obviously 4440, no surprise there. This one still has that nice Colt Rampant Pony on the side. The finish is pretty nice on this one. It's not perfect, certainly, but it's the best of the batch that I have here today. And it gives you a good idea for uh, what these guns looked like coming straight out of the Colt factory. That really nice deep Colt blue. We'll find a serial number on the bottom tang. This one's 42,000 and change. And we have a Colt manufacturer's marking up here on the barrel, along with some patent dates. Note that this is an 1883 patent, uh, primarily. That's the basis of the gun, and that's what they bought from William Elliott in 1883. Uh, interestingly, he appears to have shopped this around to Remington uh, first, and Remington wasn't interested, and so then he took it to Colt, and Colt was interested. I think for most people today the mechanical operation of this thing would be relatively self-explanatory. The pump handle or slide handle is going to open the bolt and cock the hammer at the same time. Once you open the bolt it's going to lift this little elevator inside. There will be a cartridge sitting on that elevator which will get pushed up and into the chamber when you close the bolt. Notice that as I close this it pushes that elevator back down. When it gets all the way to the bottom, it lines up with the magazine tube here, and a cartridge will pop out of the magazine tube onto that lifter, ready to be loaded next. When I open the bolt after firing, it's going to pull the empty case out, it's going to eject it, and then we're going to get... If I can do this nice and slowly, then that little elevator on the bottom will lift, pop, right back up 
like that. While the bolt was open, you could reload the gun, and that's done through this loading port right here. It's a little spring-loaded plunger, or spring-loaded cover. Push that in, and you have access to the magazine tube, because the elevator is lifted up and out of the way. Uh, standard capacity on these was uh, 15 rounds for a full-length rifle, and typically 12 rounds for a carbine. You could get things like half-length magazines, or different barrel lengths if you wanted. Colt was amenable to custom orders like that, uh, but most of the guns were sold in a standard configuration. Interestingly, everyone uh, makes a big deal out of the slam-fire capability of the Winchester 1897 pump shotgun. The Colt Lightning could do the same thing. So if I fire this and hold the trigger down, it will fire as fast as I simply pump the handle uh, until it runs out of ammunition. So you get the same, same cool slam-fire thing on these for what that's worth. Colt added to their line in 1887 by releasing a large frame version of the Lightning, which they called the Express, uh, named after the large Express-type cartridges that it was chambered for. You can see that this is substantially larger than the medium frame version. This particular example is chambered for the 3856 cartridge, or 3856-255, that would be 0.38 inches in diameter, 56 grains of powder, and a 255 grain bullet. Uh, they also offer these in the 4060, 4560, 4585, and 5095 calibers. Mechanically, everything about these large frame guns is the same as the medium, with a one little exception here, and that, that is these two ridges. These are cartridge guides to ensure proper feeding. And as you can see here, on the medium frame version, these have to slide out of the receiver slightly, uh, in order to ensure that empty cases can be ejected, but live rounds uh, are properly guided. Those, those uh, guide wedges have to move a bit. On the medium frame gun, they're fixed in place. The other problem, in fact the real problem, with the express gun is this bolt is a lot longer, which means it comes back farther, which means you have potential issues. If you take a little too aggressive of a grip on the rifle, like this, you run the risk of the bolt coming back, hitting your hand, and cutting it open. One of the nice things about the Lightning is that you can actually cycle this from the shoulder. You can keep a sight picture, um, and your firing hand stays in position, unlike a lever action rifle where your firing hand is moving. It's just your support hand has to come back and forth on the slide. Well, on the medium frame version, not a big deal. The bolt doesn't come back far enough to actually hit your hand. Different story on the Express. So that's one of the downsides of this guy. Uh, and as it turns out, the Express would be, by a long shot, the least popular of the Lightning models. These held 10 rounds in a full-length rifle. They held 8 rounds in the carbine version, because of course the cartridges for this are much longer than the, the uh, medium frame cartridges. And they sold a grand total of 6,496 of them. Compare that to 89,777 of the medium frame guns. And by the way, this is the medium frame carbine, little saddle ring. I think this is the coolest of the whole bunch. Short little 20 inch barrel. This is a really slick little carbine. But you know what's more popular than even the carbine size? That would be the 22, the small size. These were chambered for uh, 22 long or 22 short, and they made just a tiny hair more of these than they did medium frames. Uh, grand total here of 89,912 of these little 22s. So uh, the pump action is the same, although I have to disable the lock there. However, the lifter system is rather different. This has a vertical elevator much more like, let's push it down there, much more like one of the Winchester lever action rifles, because frankly the whole thing is too short to really make the hassle of uh, a pivoting elevator, a pivoting lifter make sense. So when we open this, we're going to pull our empty case out. We're going to recock the hammer, just as in the others, and then it's going to lift up one of, well, the next cartridge out of the magazine. Now the magazine loading is a little bit different. Uh, in the medium and large frame you have to open the handle so that the elevator lifter is up out of the way, and then you can load it. In the 22, it's the other way around. You push the handle forward, and then you actually pop this over to the side. So there's a junction in the magazine tube right down under here, 
and it comes out to the side, and then you have just a little bit of a loading gate, just enough to pop over the rim of a cartridge, and you can load this guy up from the back. The standard configuration of the 22 caliber gun was actually to have a half-length magazine here, uh, and that would hold uh, either 15 or 16 rounds, uh, 16 rounds of 22 shorts, 15 rounds of 22 longs. These are marked 22 caliber. All the guns were interchangeable between long and short, so no difference in markings or anywhere else in the gun. These still have the same barrel markings up there. Uh, and these 22s proved to be really fantastically popular guns. They were popular for carnivals, for uh, you know trick shooting displays. Um, you'll see there's a picture of Annie Oakley with one of these. Uh, plinkers, practice shooting, youth teaching, all sorts of things. These, these proved to be the most successful, most popular of the whole Lightning line. Um, and these would stay in production the longest until 1903. For reference sake, uh, the Express version would be in production only from 1888 to 1894. The medium frame uh, would go from 1885, a little bit earlier, to 1902, a little bit later. And the 22s were introduced in 1888 and produced until 1903. By the time all was said and done, Colt sold a grand total of like 185,000 lightning rifles of all three sizes put together. It just wasn't all that successful for them. 1904 was the end of production, the end of sales. Um, and to put this in some context, for example, just with the medium frame version, Colt manages to sell not quite 90,000 of the guns. Well, Winchester sells 720,000 of their Winchester 1873s, which is the early analogous rifle, and they ended up replacing the 93 with the 1892 pattern. Updated, improved, but the same basic thing, the pistol caliber lever action. Well, they would sell over a million Winchester 1892s, and those guns are still in production today. So that should, you know, what are we talking about? One point, let's call it 1.8 million to kind of round it nicely compared to 90,000. For every one lightning rifle Colt uh, sold, Winchester has sold something like 20 pistol caliber lever action rifles. So that's part of why you don't see Colt around all that much. They just weren't that successful. Now in the grand scheme of things, 185,000 rifles is pretty darn good. I'm sure Colt didn't lose money on this proposition, but they were hoping for it to be a big, you know, big competition for Winchester and do really well and make Colt a ton of money the way well, almost all of their handguns had up to that point. But such was not to be. Um, these are still around, although of course they're all quite old at this point. And if you're interested in actually shooting one, there are a number of Italian reproductions out there. Although the Italians, as far as I know, reproduce either exclusively or primarily the mid-framed version. So they're out there for the cowboy action market, chambering the guns for things like 4440, and then also uh, cartridges that they weren't originally chambered in, like 45 Colt and 357 Magnum or 38 Special. So all of those are available, and of course you do find a whole wide variety of original Colt Lightnings out there, like these three, four, from Rock Island. So if you're interested in these, you can find them all in uh, Rock Island's most recent auction catalog, which you should definitely check out. If you want to find out more about the company, you can take a look in the description text below, where I have links to their Instagram page and their YouTube channel, both of which have all sorts of good stuff on them for you to check out. Thanks for watching.